As the sun sets on the ancient Greek seas, the Oceanids emerge from their watery abodes. These sea nymphs, born of the titans Oceanus and Tethys, are the personification of the many moods and mysteries of the ocean. With their flowing hair and shimmering scales, they are a breathtaking sight to behold. Their lineage can be traced back through generations of divine beings. Oceanus and Tethys were both titans, the children of Uranus, the sky, and Gaia, the earth, and they were among the oldest and most powerful of the ancient Greek gods. Oceanus was the personification of the world river, which was believed to encircle the earth, and he was often depicted as a powerful and imposing figure with a long beard and flowing hair that resembled the waves of the sea. Tethys was his consort, and she was associated with the sources of fresh water that fed into the ocean. Together, Oceanus and Tethys had a large family of children, the Oceanids, who were said to be as numerous as the waves of the sea. Each of the Oceanids was unique in her appearance and personality, but they all shared a deep and abiding love for the waters of the world, and a strong connection to their parents and their divine lineage. In turn, the Oceanids had their own children, who were also associated with the waters of the world. These included the Potomoi, or river gods, who were the sons of the Oceanids and were responsible for the many rivers and streams that flowed into the ocean. Over generations, the lineage of the Oceanids continued to grow and evolve as new generations of sea nymphs were born and came of age. Some of the more well-known Oceanids include Amphitrite, the wife of Poseidon, the god of the sea, Thetis, the mother of Achilles, the great hero of the Trojan War, Metis, the mother of Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war, Doris, the wife of Nereus, another sea god and the mother of the Nereids, a group of sea nymphs. Unlike the Nereids who were sea nymphs associated with the Mediterranean, the Oceanids were said to be the personification of the waters of the world river that encircled the earth. Their hair was the color of the sea, ranging from deep blue to light green and flowing in waves down their backs. Their skin was soft and smooth and their eyes were like jewels that shimmered in the sunlight. As they swam and played in the waters, the Oceanids would wear flowing garments of sheer fabric that draped over their bodies like waterfalls. The colors of their garments varied but were often pale blues, greens and silvers, reflecting the colors of the sea and the sky. The Oceanids were said to have a deep and abiding love for the sea and all the creatures that called it home. They were gentle and kind, often playing with the dolphins and other sea creatures that swam around them. They were also known to be protectors of the sea, calling upon the winds and the waves to keep it safe from harm. As night fell, the Oceanids would often gather on the shore, their voices like a chorus of angels singing sweetly to the moon and stars above. They sang songs of love and longing, their voices carrying across the sea on the gentle breeze. The Oceanids were often associated with freshwater sources as well, such as springs and rivers that fed into the ocean. They were said to be responsible for the purity and abundance of these sources, and were often depicted in art and literature as the protectors of these sacred places. In many ways, the Oceanids were the embodiment of the natural beauty and wonder of the sea and all the life that it supported. In the ancient days of the world, when the gods and goddesses walked among mortals, there was a great and powerful god named Poseidon, ruler of the vast and stormy seas. He was fierce and wild, 
feared by many, but he was also a god of great passion, and his heart longed for a love that was as deep and vast as the oceans he ruled. One day, Poseidon saw a beautiful oceanid named Amphitrite, daughter of the mighty titans Oceanus and Tethys, dancing among the waves. Her beauty was unparalleled, and her grace and elegance captivated Poseidon's heart. He knew in that moment that she was the one he had been searching for. But Amphitrite was not easily won. She was a free spirit, a creature of the sea, and she was wary of the wild and unpredictable nature of Poseidon. She did not want to be tamed or controlled, even by a god as powerful as he. So Poseidon did the only thing he could do. He waited. He watched as Amphitrite danced among the waves, admiring her beauty and grace from afar. He sent gifts and messages to her, hoping to win her heart, but she remained aloof, untouchable. Years passed, and still Poseidon persisted. He sent his messengers to Amphitrite, begging her to consider his proposal of marriage. Finally, Poseidon took matters into his own hands. He traveled to the very depths of the ocean, seeking out Amphitrite's secret underwater grotto. There, he found her, surrounded by her sisters and singing a song of love and longing. Poseidon stepped forward and knelt before Amphitrite, offering her a golden necklace studded with precious gems. With a love that burned brighter than the sun, Poseidon swore an oath to Amphitrite that he would devote himself to her completely. He pledged to honor and cherish her, to be her faithful companion, and to protect her with his life for all eternity. His words were imbued with a passion so deep that they moved even the sea creatures to tears, and Amphitrite's heart swelled with love for him in return. And at last, Amphitrite saw the truth in Poseidon's eyes. She saw his deep and abiding love for her, and she felt her own heart stir in response. She took the necklace from Poseidon's hands and placed it around her neck, accepting his proposal of marriage. The gods and goddesses of Olympus were overjoyed and they celebrated the wedding of Poseidon and Amphitrite with great fanfare. The sea creatures sang and danced, and the waves themselves seemed to rejoice. And from that day forward, Poseidon and Amphitrite ruled over the seas together, their love as deep and unending as the oceans themselves. As the stars twinkle overhead and the moon casts its silver light upon the waves, the oceanids continue their timeless dance. They are the embodiment of the beauty and mystery of the ancient Greek seas, a symbol of the enduring power and magic of the natural world. The oceanids were often depicted in works of art such as pottery and sculpture, as graceful and elegant figures. They were typically shown wearing flowing robes and carrying various objects that symbolize their connection to the sea, such as seashells, dolphins, or fish. In addition to their association with the sea, the oceanids were also believed to be connected to various other aspects of nature. For example, they were said to be responsible for the growth and nourishment of plants and animals and were sometimes associated with the cycles of the moon and the seasons. Whether depicted in ancient artworks or celebrated in epic poems, the Oceanids were a constant presence in Greek mythology and their stories were passed down from generation to generation. From the powerful Poseidon's courtship of Amphitrite to the Oceanids' involvement in the myth of the Golden Fleece, they played an important role in shaping the culture and beliefs of the ancient Greeks. Although they may not be seen by human eyes, 
Their legacy lives on in the waves and currents that continue to shape our world, a testament to the enduring power and majesty of the sea. Stay tuned for our next chapter on the Tritons. See you soon, adventurers.